Hmm. Shouldn't this be a little more lively? Well, lucky for us, it's actually super easy to spice this scene up a little bit. You don't even need a plug-in or anything. My go-to is footstep sounds. And why stop at sounds? We can do some effects too. Now, what do I mean by footstep sounds and footstep effects? I mean a sound, animation, or any other kind of audio-visual effect that plays when a player walks around. Actually, this is simpler to accomplish in RPG Maker than in some other game engines. Because RPG Maker is tile-based, we can play our various effects when a player walks over a particular tile. There are a few ways you can mark the tiles that are going to have certain effects, but I think it's easiest to use regions. If you're already using regions for something else though, you could use like terrain tags and still follow this tutorial almost exactly. But since it's what I like to use, let's use regions. So what kind of effect do we want first? Maybe just a grassy step sound effect when we walk onto the grass? We've got to pick an appropriate region first to be our grassy region. Let's go over to the R tab and take a look around. 17 is quite green. Yeah, we'll use 17. Now let's make a common event. We'll call it step sounds. Don't worry about the trigger, we're going to activate it manually later. Technically, we could put this on parallel, but I notice a bit of game lag when I have parallel common events versus when I just have parallel events on maps. Plus, there are some maps like initialize maps and cutscene maps, or maybe even just custom menu maps or something that you don't need footsteps activated for. So let's activate it on a per map basis. We're going to put all of our footstep effects in here, or I guess you could separate them by like areas in your world or something if you're going to have all snowy sounds and effects in one area and then grassy in another and yeah, but I'm unorganized and I like it when they're all together. So let's do it this way. To keep the sound effects easily findable though, we will mark each a new one with a comment. Make a new comment and call it grass step sound. After the comment, we'll do a conditional branch. This is where we'll check if the player is in our grass region, region 17. So just move your condition from switch to variable and make a new variable called region ID. Then make the condition if region ID variable equals 17. No need for an else, just click okay. Now inside of that conditional branch, we're going to nest another conditional branch. This time, go to the fourth page and select script. Write this script exactly, paying attention to spaces, capital letters, etc. It has to be precise. This script checks if your player is moving. Without this, the effect we're going to add would just keep playing even if the player is standing still. Again, don't worry about an else branch, just click OK. Now, we could just throw a grass sound effect inside this condition and be done with it, but it sounds a little samey when we do that. So instead, let's control variables and create a new variable called randomizer. We can use this randomizer variable in all sorts of ways, but for now, it's intended to randomize our footstep sounds a little bit. So set the randomizer to a random number between one and two. Then time for our final nested conditional branch. This one will check if the randomizer variable is set to one. Check the else box on this one. Because of our control variables just before, if it's not set to one, then it's set to two. So two equals our else. In the first conditional branch, let's add a grassy sound effect. If you don't want it to overwhelm your players, set the volume pretty low. Now, under the else branch, let's add the same sound effect, but adjust the volume and pitch slightly. You could also just use a whole different sound effect. And instead of just using two sound effects, you could actually set your randomizer to any number, really, and make that amount of conditional branches, and play a ton of different sounds. You can totally customize this to your needs. Now that we have our footstep sounds common event with our grass sound, there's still more to do. We're going to make another common event. We'll call this one detect region ID. Go to Control Variables and make a new variable called Player X for Region ID. Now set it to Game Data Player Map X. With that done, we're going to Control Variables again and make another variable. This one is going to be Player Y for Region ID, and we're going to use Player's Map Y. Combined, what these two variables do is just check what tile your player is on. Finally, we're going to go to the third page of Event Commands under Map, and we're going to click Get Location Info. We're going to lock our location info into that region ID variable we made earlier. Scroll down to info type and select region ID, and then select designation with variables. Those variables are going to be our player X and our player Y. Again, leave the trigger on none and then select OK because we have our common events made. Final step, we're going to go to the R tab and we're going to draw out our region 17 where we want those grass step sounds. Here's a tip. 
I personally find that doing a checkered pattern instead of just the straight region leads to a better sound. At least in my game, whenever I have the footstep sounds playing on every single tile that need that sound, it's kind of overwhelming and busy and sounds really ugh. I think it's more natural when I have it like this with the checkerboard pattern. Now, even though we have the regions in place, it's not going to do anything until we add an event in. On every map that has footstep sounds, I like to put the event in the lower left corner of the map. So right down here, I'm going to do a new parallel event. And all this event is going to do is call the common event detect region ID, and then call the common event footstep sounds. And now when we walk around, we should have that grassy sound event. Great. Now let's do an effect effect. I think it would be cool if we could step in water and the water would splash a little bit. So to start, first we need an animation because what we're going to do is, in addition to our sound effects, we're going to show an animation over the player. In my case, I already have one. It's just a very short, simple, very tiny animation that I don't think you're gonna be able to see well in this video, but it's just four frames of like a ripple. I'm gonna use that, and then let's head back over to our footstep sounds common event. Let's add a new comment, and we'll call this water step. Oh, I forgot to pick a region that we were going to use. Maybe 19, it's quite blue. So just like before, we're going to do a new conditional branch and we're going to check if our region ID variable equals 19. Add that same nested conditional branch with the script that checks if our player is moving. Do our control variables for our randomizer once more. This time, instead of one to two, we're going to do one to three. And now if our randomizer equals one, Let's play the sound effect for water if it equals two. Let's play the sound effect for water with a slightly different pitch and volume. And if it equals three, we're not going to play the sound effect at all. At the end of those three ifs, we're going to show our water step animation on the player. Click OK and let's go back to our map. Our two common events are already active because we set up that event earlier. So we just have to lay down our region 19. Actually with water, I don't like to do the checkerboard pattern. I like to just fill up the whole area. That's why we added in that one conditional branch that doesn't actually play any sound effect. It's the sound effect that gets overwhelming, but it's good on every single water tile to be able to see that splash. There's actually so much more you can do with this approach. I like this better than step sound related plugins because you get a lot more control. Though if you're just going to do really simple stuff, the plugins are probably your better bet. There's less work involved. But what do you think of this method? Is this something that you would use in your own game? Can you think of any interesting use cases beyond just step sounds? I would love to know your thoughts in the comments. Also, if you need any particular tutorial or have any requests for videos, go ahead and ask in the comments or feel free to email me at the email I have linked in the description below. I also have a link to the itch.io for my game in the description, and also the link to my Ko-Fi or coffee, however you prefer to say it. Character growth, I'm not dying on the hill that it's pronounced Ko-Fi like lo-fi anymore. But I have that linked in the description below if you found this video helpful and would like to support me. Anyway, I will see you next week. Bye!